Hello, I'm Anke Brocker from RWT at Aachen University in Germany. I will present a work flowboard how seamless live flow-based programming impacts learning to code for embedded electronics. For this, I work together with my colleagues René Schäfer, Simon Völker and Jan Borchers from RWTH Aachen University and Christian Remy from Lancaster University. Platforms like Arduino lower the threshold for makers to get in touch with embedded coding. They also support the integration of it into our STEM education. But even with these beginner-friendly systems, learning embedded coding is still hard. You need to understand the coding, the electronics, and also the relationship between code and electronics. For example, if the LED turns on as soon as the light sensor receives the, snickle, the signal, it is too dark. But the question for us is now, how can we make this happening in programming code? For this, users need to work with an IDE to make their in hardware interactive. Most IDEs make embedded coding difficult because the standard that people need to do is writing text. And this often needs to syntax errors. The IDEs are also not seamless. Your code and electronics are not next to each other. And above all these, the IDEs are not live. You always have to upload code to the Arduino controller first before you can test it. There is development happening to support learners and improve processes when they get in touch with embedded coding. For example, the IDE Scratch. You can see Scratch on this slide. It uses a block-based programming code. This avoids syntax errors, but is, is still the imperative programming paradigm. So we were curious now if a different programming paradigm called flow-based programming can help learners. There are a few flow-based programming environments for embedded coding, but they don't support live coding and they don't bridge the gap between the code and the electronics. That's the reason why we created Flowboard. Flowboard gives you the opportunity to explore and learn embedded coding using flow-based programming. So now instead of working with command sequences, you assemble processing nodes into a graph for which signals and the other data flows. Our Flowboard consists of an Arduino, an iPad, two breadboards, one left and one right, and an IDE that uses visual flow-based programming. The graph edits take effect immediately, so our flowboard is now a live coding environment. Here you can see a setup. You can plug your electronic components into the breadboards and link them to the processing nodes on the screen via the pins. So now sensors and input devices like a force sensor can be placed on the left side of the board and output components like LEDs on the right board. For our research, we conducted two user studies with high school students to investigate our approach for learning embedded coding. Well, with our first study, we want to understand if Flowboard could be used by students to solve embedded programming tasks. We had a between-group design, so another group of students solved tasks with Arduino. Arduino is an imperative block-based IDE for Arduino, and it's also used in our STEM education. In the study, we had 10 participants. There were two parts in the study. In the first part, the participants had to solve three guided tasks. The first task was making a push button turning on an LED, then making an LED blink, and the last task was making an LED blink while the push button is held down. In the second part, they had to solve two tasks on their own. First, the users had to make an LED shine depending on the values a force sensor measures. And then the pizza speaker should buzz whenever the outputs of an accelerometer exceed a certain, a, a certain threshold. So now on this slide you can see the setup in our flowboard condition. The flowboard is in the middle and it's surrounded by the electronic components. In our other block condition, the laptop was running the other block IDE. One important thing were the sheet sheets that we provided in both conditions. They included descriptions of the nodes and the blocks that the participants needed to program the tasks. We also gave them schematics of the electronic circuits, because our study wanted to focus on the impact of Flowboard on programming the electronics and not the electronic circuits building. We found that Flowboard was a viable alternative to learn embedded coding. The learners tended to work faster with the flow-based programming than with the block-based environment. That suggests that transferring the knowledge to a flow-based programming paradigm seems easy, and this can also help 
to save time when they get started learning to program. Flowbot was also helpful to execute sense evaluate actuate loops and then instead of always having to upload the code first to the microcontroller. But we also saw confusion happening. Interestingly, some of our users even thought that the yellow connections in the editor were power cables which the current flows. But actually data flows through them and the current only fl uh, flows through the physical wires. Also, we observed that different tasks were easy to program depending on the programming paradigm. For example, for Flowboard, the tasks were easy when the participants had an input and an output component, and that the user could connect via the iPad directly. But for example, when they had to program a heartbeat to let an idea blink, the students were challenged in the Flowboard condition. Our first study showed the viability of flow-based programming for learning embedded coding. But there were still open questions that we wanted to understand in our second follow-up study. The second study concentrated on qualitative data to understand the impact that Flowboard has on the learning experience. We had four research questions. How do students picture electronics and embedded programming? How do the concepts of liveness and seamlessness help to facilitate the understanding of what is happening inside electronics and Flowboard? How does Flowboard help as a tool to introduce students to electronics, sensor values, and functionality of electronics? And how does Flowboard encourage students to explore electronics and embedded programming on their own? Our second study was within subjects. We had 12 participants that took part in groups of two. We believed it was important to investigate the potential of flow-based programming to encourage students to explore embedded programming. That's why we chose uh, the groups of two. We had four steps in the study. In the first one, we asked the participants to draw a picture of what they had in mind when thinking about electronics and programming them. So the participants saw a tutorial video about how to blink LED with an Arduino, and then we asked them to draw their thoughts on two questions. How do you picture what happens inside the electronics to let the LED blink? And what do you imagine programming the electronics would look like? With these questions, we want to get an understanding of the students' mental models. The second step was a programming session. The students had to do three tasks on their own. So first they had to use a button to blink an LED, then the pressure sensor should be, should be used to control a pizza, and at last a pressure sensor was used to control an LED stripe. In our third step, we repeated the step one, which was the drawing task, because we want to see if the perception of our participants changed when using Flowboard. As a last step, we had a CMI structured interview, including the reflection with participants on their drawings and also their experience with Flowboard in general. With saw so with the drawing task, the participants were unfamiliar with the flow-based program concept before the study. And using Flowboard at least gave them a fleeting understanding of flow-based programming. The seamlessness and liveness provide cues for participants to understand the electronic components. Our setup also gave users the feeling that the electronics were always alive, so it was easy and fast for them to see the sensor values on the iPad. This matches the behavior of electronic circuits, as they also react as soon as they have power. So that's the reason why we recommend flow-based programming for embedded programming learning environments. Flowboard had expanded the student's notion of what programming means beyond the typical lines of imperative code. Our participants enjoyed the system, but they prefer also more complex components. We also saw that Flowboard is suitable for beginners and it supports, supports working in pairs. But it's not ideal for complex projects, because the system is too bulky to integrate it into other things. Another interesting idea by the participants were built-in tutorials to support independent exploration. Overall, we have found that flow-based programming is a promising alternative approach to learn embedded coding, because it offers many opportunities for a more seamless, live and collaborative experience when learning to code for embedded electronics. For more information, please refer to our paper, and thank you for listening.